We talk a great deal about salvation in a lot of different messages. Uh, really, regardless of what we're preaching about, but anyone here, when uh, the other gentlemen are preaching, whenever I'm preaching, I think every message, or almost every message, at least touches on salvation. Largely because that's literally the last commission God gave to man while Lord Jesus Christ was here before he left. That was essentially what he sent it out to do. And Mark, the Bible says, go ye into all the earth and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're supposed to do. Christians, believers, are supposed to go out preaching the gospel to every creature. The original commission from God to mankind, all the way back in Genesis, be fruitful and multiply. That commission still stands. Uh, that's actually the reason you have so much in this world, so much, uh, so many organizations and uh, laws and attempts to counter that very thing, that the aspect of reproduction. God told us to go ye, or be fruitful and multiply. Uh, that's why you have things like so many organizations pushing for abortion. Um, you have so many agendas centered around same-sex marriage. Uh, so much of our society and culture and way of life is centered around depopulation. Everything geared towards stopping what God instructed us to do. Well, that same resistance you'll have in his, final, his last commission to us, which is uh, go ye into all the earth and uh, preach the gospel to every creature. We were instructed to talk about salvation, tell people how to get saved, uh, further the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and as such, we spend a great deal of time talking about that topic. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ saves us, Nothing we do gets us saved. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved, grace receiving something you did not earn, uh, through faith. And that's what I want to jump into, because that's part of it that maybe I don't spend as, as much time on, and it's that faith part. Talk about how it doesn't, it's not any kind of works. You can't do anything good enough to get saved. You can't feed enough hungry people. You can't clothe enough cold people. You can't go to church enough. You can't read your Bible enough. You literally cannot be good enough to get saved. <clears throat> because salvation comes through grace. Or comes from grace. The grace of God. But we are required to have faith. And through that faith, God applies his grace. And that's the part that I think, I was having a conversation the other day, that I think maybe we don't highlight enough or explain well enough. Uh, and that's what I wanted to look at a little bit today. Uh, so you can open your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. And in verse 23, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now I bring this verse up because the gentleman's response to him when he said that. That's Jesus Christ telling you that anything you want, and that includes salvation, can be obtained by simply believing. And then the man replies to him, verse 24, And straightway the father of the child cried out. Now it says it this way, and pay attention to how he words things. It says he cried out. He wanted to stress to you. How earnestly this man felt what he was saying. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears. This man is passionate. His whole body is engulfed in the emotion centered around this statement. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. That's maybe one of, I, I come across so many verses that I always say, man, that's, that's one of my favorite verses. <laughs> this falls in that category. That's one of my favorite verses because it highlights a, a simple truth that for that person that's not certain of what do they actually do to get saved or what they did, was that the right thing to get saved? Because they're not sure about that faith part. And this verse highlights that. It highlights the fact that when the Lord uses the word believe, there are two very distinctively different 
definitions for that. And what he says right there, Lord, I believe. He said, I know what you're saying is true. I know that. Then he said, help thou my unbelief. I'm not trusting in that. And that's the difference. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble. That means they know it's true. And think about that. The devils have seen the Lord Jesus Christ be born. They've seen him walk the earth. They watched him die on the cross. They saw the earth quake as he rose from the dead and came back to life and ascended. I mean, they know. There's no question. When they say, I believe, the devils believe and tremble. Because there's no question in their mind that God is real. There's no question in their mind that the only means to, to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. But they don't believe, have faith. And this is what I wanted to highlight today. Because when you look at a verse that we use all the time, Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not may be saved, not might be saved, not can be saved. Thou shall be saved. Now what that verse is saying, it's not saying that the moment you know it's true, that if thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it's not a matter of you know God raising from the dead. The devils know God raising from the dead. What that word believe is talking about is where the father of this child is crying out and saying, Help thou mine unbelief. When it says believe in thine heart, that means you have put your trust in that fact. You trust that God raised him from the dead. And if he raised Jesus from the dead, then you have nothing to fear. When you die, he will raise you up also. You trust in that fact. I mean, you have to first know you have to know that it's true. But then you have to believe in your heart. You have to trust that he's, that, that he's done that. And then the first part of that verse says, confess with thy mouth. This is another thing that people always try to bring up about this verse. They holler around. They say, well, man, anybody can say that. And that's not what the word confess means. It doesn't matter that you say, yeah, I, I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Yeah, I know that he's the only way to heaven. Yep, I, I believed in my heart. I've trusted in Jesus. You can say that, but that's not what the verse is telling you. The verse doesn't say, say with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. It says, confess. The word confess means to reveal a truth. So it actually has to be true. That you, in your heart, have put your trust in Jesus. And that's the difference between the two words believe. Straight away the father cried out and with tears, Lord, I believe. I know that it's true. Help thou mine unbelief. Help me trust in that truth. Help me put my faith in that. And now here's, the, hopefully that explains or makes it a, that aspect of it a little bit more clear. But here's the part that I think people struggle with. This is the part that I think caused people to have the most confusion or uncertainty. It's because they call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, I, I feel like it's verse 13. Therefore, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They feel like they've, they've done that, but then they're not sure that did anything. I mean, because i got news for you. When you get saved, when you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you ask Him to come into your heart, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17, or 3, verse 17, says that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. They've asked Jesus to come into their heart and save them. They've, they want to say that they're putting their trust in that, by faith, they've confessed the Lord Jesus Christ with their mouth. They've done everything they see to do. They've watched all the videos and heard all the preachers talk about salvation. They know they can't be good enough to get to heaven. They know Jesus dying on the cross is the only acceptable payment for their sins. They know God raised Jesus from the dead. They want to say now that they trust in their heart that he has. But then they start saying, well, I, I, I'm not sure. And then when they do that, they're expecting some light to shine out of heaven or their whole life to... And that's not what takes place. 
It's like, when you do that, I've got news for you. You're still going to have fears. You're still going to struggle. Your flesh has not been redeemed. Your spirit has. But your flesh is still sin. The only thing that's taken place is a spiritual circumcision. Your spirit has been cut free of that flesh. So that when that flesh dies, that spirit can escape and join with the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they, they make that confession, they say, man, I put my faith and my trust in Jesus. But man, I, did I really? And here's the thing. I, I liken the word faith to courage. They're not the same thing, but how they work and how people mistakenly view them. People get it in their, their head that courage somehow takes away fear. That you hear about somebody and that, oh man, that person just so courageous and this soldier, he took up arms and he ran off into battle and he fought against the enemies and he, had, he was so courageous and they think that he was fearless. And that's not what courage is. Actually, courage would be the opposite of that. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is action in the presence of fear. And that's faith. When you call on the name of the Lord Jesus and you put your trust and your faith that God has saved you, you will not instantly be perfect peace and harmony and no questions, no concerns, no nothing. The Bible says faith is the evidence of things right in front of your faith. No, that's not what it says. It says it's the evidence of things unseen. So it's literally you trusting in what you can't possibly be certain of. What you can't hold. What you can't see with your own eyes. What you can't test and validate. Faith is the evidence. And that's the whole point. When you've realized that there's nothing you can do. You will not, you'll not receive a degree from God that says certi certificate of salvation. You don't get anything. That's the point. When you can look at that and you say, man, I, I've not done all these good deeds that I can hang my hat on and say, well, that'll give you to heaven. I've not done, been this wonderful, great person so I can say, well, clearly I'm good enough to get. I literally have no evidence. And when you say, and I'm still trusting Jesus to give me to heaven. I, there's no reason I should think I get to go to heaven. But I'm going to trust him to get me there. I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to have questions. There'll be days when I wake up and I was like, man, how, how could I have done what I did last night if I'm saved? If I'm really saved, how could I have done that? All I can tell you, read Romans chapter 7. And the Apostle Paul will talk to you about how corrupt his flesh is. His flesh is. And how many times he does what he knows he shouldn't. How many times you're going to wake up and say, man, how could I have done that if I was saved? Here's some news for you. The fact that you asked yourself that question is evidence. The lost don't care what they did last night. The lost don't question the sins they commit. The Every time you question, man, am I really saved? I'm, I did everything the Bible says. Romans 10, 9, Romans 10, 13, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Ephesians, all these different things. Man, I've done all these things. Am I saved? You questioning that is literally evidence that you've, you've taken all of your trust out of man out of your actions, out of your own hands, out of your good deeds, and place them in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some things will be evident if you're questioning. If, if, you, if you just got saved, I'm sorry to tell you, there, there's nothing. You're going to have to just continue trusting that God's going to save you. Keep walking forward. Read your Bible. Get around other brothers and sisters of Christ. Find a good home church to get involved in and start laboring for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do those types of things, but you're not going to have any clarity in your own life, your own actions that tells you right when you get saved. But if, once you've been saved for a while, you're going to notice if you're saved that you want to know what the Bible says. You may not have the discipline to read it as much as you should. Your flesh is going to fight you on it. 
but you're gonna have a desire to know what that book says. You're gonna have an innate love in your heart for other brothers and sisters in Christ. You're gonna have a genuine desire to be around faithful believers of the Lord and not around those corrupt, sinful people of the world. And that won't be instant. You'll, you may still do some of the things that you used to do, the things that made you actually call on the name of the Lord Jesus because you realized you needed to be saved out of that. You may still be pulled into those things. You'll still struggle with sin. But as time goes by, that spirit that's in you, if it's the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to compel you to seek out His Word. It will compel you to move toward fellowship of faithful believers. And those steps may be small. Those steps may take a while. But those steps will take place. And if you're getting none of that, if you're like, well, you, you literally are not questioning any sin in your life, if you're not questioning your salvation and you have no interest in the Bible, you have no interest in fellowship with other faithful believers of Christ, yet the, the, those aren't things you're like, you still only are interested in the world that you've been in your whole life. At that point, you need to be honest with yourself. You need to look into your own heart and ask yourself, did you even give any thought to what happens when you die? But if you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you have these questions, if this has been a question for you, I suspect it's for a good reason, and it's because you have had those thoughts in your heart, those, those, that conflict within you. And that's actually a good sign, because somebody that has not gotten saved, there will be nothing rebelling against the flesh. It's only once you've been saved or you're being called by God to get saved that you feel that conflict. And that's what faith is. Faith is actually the evidence of what you have nothing to prove. You have no evidence of. Because you can't rely on your good works. You can't rely on your good deeds and the things that you've done. You can't rely on what a wonderful person you are. And the moment you know that and you've stopped relying on that to get you to heaven, that's the actual faith. That's the evidence is that you're trusting in something you can't see. You know what that, that's faith. So just keep in mind as you move forward in this new Christian life, the more you study the Bible, the more you read the Word of God, the more you get around other faithful believers in Christ, the more you'll get that reassurance. And that does come, hopefully everybody understands that, that does come as you move along. You will get to a point in your, your Christian walk that, that you've become comfortable with that, you've You've seen the evidence in your life and the Lord has given you that peace that you can't actually explain, but you've got that peace about salvation. And that'll, that'll be a wonderful day for you because when that day comes, you don't fear death anymore. And that's a good day for you. But that is actually faith. The fact that you're asking that question, that in itself is evidence that you may be saved.